Hello and welcome back to another episode of Math with Sewn. Today we are going to be looking at graphs and we are going to be determining how many real and imaginary zeros we have from that graph. So not actually finding them, just how many real versus how many imaginary we have. Now everywhere it crosses an x-axis, that counts as three real zeros. And in that case, in this problem, that's all we got, three real zeros. But if I were to take a problem and if I were to graph it and it kind of does a change in direction but doesn't go through the x-axis, then that would be adding in some imaginary zeros. And there's a few ways to figure out exactly how many you have. Well, let's start with the easy part. We got one, two. We got two real. Okay? We also should take some context clues. Because this is going in the same direction, we should have an even amount of zeros when we add up the real and imaginary versus up here where we had opposite directions. One was going down, the other was going up. So we had an odd amount of real and or imaginary zeros when we add them up. Here, when it went and changed direction, we didn't cross the x-axis. This looked like it could have gone up and then came back down, but it didn't. When it does that, when it has a change in direction but doesn't cross the x-axis, you can think of it as if these two were a little higher, they would have created some real zeros, but they didn't. And that means that we have two imaginary zeros or complex zeros as well thus making four, which it looks like it should have had four to begin with. Another way that is not a foolproof way, but is very helpful in a lot of cases, is you can count up the mins and the maxes, both one, two, three. We have three extrema, so to speak, which is a combination of two mins and one max. And because we have three extrema, if you add one to that number every single time, that tells you the total as well, which should be two, four. Got it. Let's do a few more. A few more. These are pretty quick. So let's say we got something that looks a little bit crazy. Let's do, let's do something really crazy. Let's do wink. That's pretty crazy, right? So let's start with the real part. One, two, three real. Then interpret, should we have an odd amount of total zeros? If it's going in opposite directions, yes, we should. So we need to add in the imaginary part. And it looks like we got at least two imaginary. And by the way, I didn't say this before. Imaginary numbers always come in pairs. You can't have one imaginary solution. You always have an even two, four, six, hopefully not eight imaginary or complex solutions. So we can use our min-max trick, one, two, three, four. I got one, two, three, four relative extremas because we have four extremas. If you add one to that, you should have five total zeros. So if I have five total zeros and I already have three real, well, that must mean that I have two imaginary zeros as well to make it total to five. And it's kind of easy to see where they should be. We have this part right here that could have gone further down but didn't. And if it did, there would they were there right there. There would be the two imaginaries. They didn't include them, and that's okay. There are two imaginary solutions right there. All right, let's do um, let's do one more easy one. Get this out of the way. What about, oh, my red pen's dying. Here we go. What about if I had something like this? Okay. Does it ever cross the x-axis? No, it does not. So that means that we only have imaginary. We have zero real solutions. And if we count up one, two, three, one, two, three, plus one makes four total zeros or total solutions. We must have four imaginary. Now, if you're still with me, if you're still with me, I apologize. That's not the last solution. I forgot that there's some weird case scenarios. Um, the more common weird case scenario 
is something like this. If it bounces off of the zero, they call that a multiplicity of two, a multiplicity of two, which means it counts as two zeros like for you. So in this case, we yeah, we only have two real zeros, um, but one of them is double dipping. This one is pulling double duty because we should have had odd amount here. We should have had three zeros, but, and it, it works too. If you look at this, we had a max and a min. Two plus one make three. We didn't really have three because this one right here counted twice. And because it counted twice, we had one, two, three like we should have. So if it ever bounces off, that counts as a multiplicity of two. And if it has a multiplicity of two, it counts as two zeros for you, but it's still only one zero. Okay, it's, it's doing double duty, but it's still only one zero. It just is counting as two of them for you because you need to still have a total of three solutions, so to speak. All right, that's going to do it for this one. Till next time, everybody, stay positive. I will see y'all later. Bye.